In this video, we're going to see how to set up the Kotlin Android extension to make our programming a lot easier in an Android project. Now, what do I mean by that? The Kotlin Android extension, one of the, one of the functions that it provides for us is quite handy, which is it takes all of the things that we see on a screen. In other words, all of these things that we're looking at when we're looking at the emulator, and it makes them accessible from the activity, which is the controller underneath the screen automatically. What's nice is this saves us a very confusing step that we used to have to do, which was find view by ID to try to get these elements off the screen and also some casting. To set up the Android extension, all we have to do is add this line to our build doc radle. So apply plugin Kotlin Android extensions. Let's go ahead and give it a go. So I start with my project. I double shift. I say build and I'm going to choose the apps build doc radle. Down here in the dependencies section, I'm going to say apply space plugin colon, and then, and then a single tick, and then Kotlin dash Android extensions, just like so, and then end with a single tick. Looks like I did a, a couple typos I need to fix here. Plug in, just like so. And then we'll save, and of course we'll sync. We'll give that just a moment. While that's waiting, we'll go back to our GPS appliant, and we'll get ready to start here. Everything looks good, so now I will go to my, my GPS plant and I'm going to add an import here. We'll say import, whoops, and then Kotlin X, so Kotlin extensions, dot Android, dot synthetic, this is what we'll call the synthetic import, dot main, dot activity GPS of plant. So notice that we're actually importing our layout that we, that we created in a previous video, this activity GPS of plant. Very important, we need to put an asterisk after that because the asterisk means import everything from that layout. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's already come up with this for me, so I only really need one, but we'll go ahead and choose save. Now, the nice thing is if I take a look at my, let's say my content layout, we know that if I scroll up a little bit here, we know, actually scroll down a bit, where you have an autocomplete text view called ACT plant name. If I go to the design, it's this guy right here our autocomplete text view. So just remember ACT plant name. Now I go back to GPS of plant and I go to the on create method and take a look ACT plant name. It automatically resolves and notice it has the ACT plant name and then over here it has the type autocomplete text view. So I could say ACT plant name and then I could say dot text and then dot to string. And what that will do is that will return to me a string representation of what is in that ACT plant name. So I can save our plant name equals ACT plant name dot text dot to string. So no need to do find view by ID or anything like that. As long as I have this import here and I have the extensions added to my build gradle, I can just grab any of these items from my activity or from my content based on the name of that item uh, under, under the covers in the layout file. Well, in here I noticed a little defect here going to fix fix this uh, package name here. Okay, just like so. And we're good. Uh, okay, so uh, the, the, this makes it easy for us to get access to any of these widgets where a user might have entered some data. We can also set up a button click handler this way. So let's try that. Let's remember one of the buttons that we have. We have this button, which is a BTN save. It's probably easier if we look at the content view for that. But we have this button. You see it's called BTN save. So let's add an event handler for this BTN save. In other words, something that will be invoked when the user presses on that button. So I'm going to simply say BTN save, and then we're going to say set on click listener. And you see that it, it accepts an object of type view on click listener. On click listener is an interface. And this interface just has one method. So we can take a little shortcut here. I say on click listener and then view, and then we'll do uh, an arrow like so. And whoops, and we will say, actually I'll tell you what, we'll make this an open curly and a closed curly. And we'll put the view inside the open and closed curly. And then basically what happens in here is what we want to have happen when the user clicks on the button. So uh, I'm going to say, okay, ACT plant name. Oh, uh, you know what? We'll just copy it from below, can I? Yeah, we'll do that. So ACT plant name. Uh, var plant name equals ACT plant name dot text dot to string. 
we'll say if our location equals uh, ACT location dot text dot to string one more time. So get the string value. We'll say var description equals, uh, I think that one was txt, no, edt description, there we go, dot text, and once again, dot to string, just like so. Okay, we can get our latitude and longitude, so on and so forth. But in any case, these are things that we need to populate a specimen object. So we don't have a specimen object yet. We'll define that in a future video. But I do at least have enough now where I can snap a breakpoint and I can ensure that this indeed will be invoked provided that I press that save button. So let's go ahead and run the emulator and we'll see what happens. Our emulator is now up and running. So I'll type a plant name Eastern Redbud location. We'll say Cincinnati. And description, we'll say an excellent specimen. And now the real tell, what happens when I click the save button? I click the save button and you know that you notice that my breakpoint hits, which is good news. I press F8 a few times and you see the plant name resolves to Eastern Redbud and the string uh, location to Cincinnati and uh, so on and so forth. So at this point, we've seen that we can use the, the Kotlin Android extension to get fields from our screen and we can get some attributes from those fields and we can pull the data in that the user has entered. In our next video, we're going to create a DTO which can receive this information. And we're also going to take a look at one of my favorite parts of Kotlin, which is the with construction. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.